First off, I'm immortal, and my life motto is, it begins with me and ends with me. He is an icon. His ponytail and sunglasses have conquered the world. Today, he's probably the most famous German on the planet. He is a man of the century. He's inexhaustible. He's as precise as clockwork. It even surprises me that I can't cross the road without some portrait, doll, caricature or sketch being made for me by someone. Somehow it's phenomenal. Karl Lagerfeld is everywhere, yet succeeds in remaining elusive. It's quite strange. It has pros and cons. The disadvantage is that you can't go out on the street without being followed. But, as they so elegantly say here, you can't take the butter and the money from the butter. My name's no longer Lagerfeld, but Logofeld. And they verstecken sich selbst hinter der Brille, weil sie nicht beobachtet werden wollen. Yes, I don't want to disclose my facial expression to the public too much because, you know, short-sighted people often have sad eyes and you look like a dog that wants to be adopted. You have to remove your glasses for two to three hours so you don't look like that. And that pity-evoking look is not something I want to portray. It doesn't match the reality. His main occupation is still fashion. Every year, he seamlessly creates one collection after the other. But he hates the word fashion designer, as in any case, for a man of his many talents, it would be a gross understatement. Karl doesn't create trends. He is one. When he does something, the world watches. And things we perceive stay with us and stay strong. I claim to be able to tell when Karl has influenced somebody. Being one of the most influential people in the fashion world is not enough. When one works with another artist, they're a painter and paint from time to time or illustrate a book. A photographer is a photographer, an author an author. With him, it's a mixture and he does it all at the same time. Karl's idea for the upcoming Chanel show, to turn the venerable Grand Palais in Paris into a large supermarket for a show that will last a mere 20 minutes. In a world whose wheels are turned by consumption, it may as well be properly celebrated, but not without a little irony. It's only Chanel products that can be found in this supermarket, from the eggs to the bananas, from the chocolate to the salt. And once Karl is there, he is the product of the moment. Consumption for Karl Lagerfeld is the most important sign of our times. It's a cultural statement. It's the culture of our era. There's nothing you can do about it. Don't criticize it. We adapt to the epoch. The epoch does not adapt to us. If you don't adapt, you're dépassé. We intentionally invented 500 products that don't exist and designed the names and the labeling. Here we've got over 100,000 of them. The show is about to start and tensions are running high. And it begins. Eagerly anticipated designs, the result of months of hard work, are presented to the hungry audience. And the finale, the master of ceremonies. 
die Mode als solche, wenn man sie macht, das hat ja was von Noten setzen. Sicherlich, da ist genau wie Noten, es gibt so und so viele course, Elemente. I'm well cultured in classical music. My mother was a very good violinist. As a child, I had to be her page turner for these violin studies and they were the most boring things. And she had these records, they were quatuors, and the violin would be missing and had to accompany the record, and I had to turn the records. They didn't last long, but it gave me a reasonable education. For a year. And then she said, you've got no talent. Draw, it makes less noise. And she was right. He always wanted to be a caricaturist, a childhood dream that has come true. He regularly aims his pen at current affairs with political caricatures in the Frankfurter Allgemeine newspaper. I want to know everything and see everything, but not necessarily be a part of it. I can adapt to anything. I belong everywhere and nowhere. This is his talent, being open to everything with a childlike curiosity. But where does all the inspiration come from? I try to find something. Not that I ask questions, I try to find answers. That sounds pretentious, I shouldn't say that. I can't formulate, I just express it with my collections, photos, sketches. But not in an abstract sentence, with which one can say what one likes if one has a way with words. Yes, even in nightmares, but mostly at twilight, just before waking up. But you can't rely on that, you can't lie down and assume I'll think of something. You have to make an effort, work for the bin. More than 90% of what I do lands in the bin. That's important. I don't keep anything. If the others didn't have the archives, I'd have nothing. I'm only interested in what I'll do in the future. What I've done is okay, but I don't think about it. It's another life. This is where his life began, in Hamburg Blankenese. A world of grand villas and well-kept parks. This is where Karl Lagerfeld grew up. Surrounded by Hamburg shipping merchants and magnates, his father owns the country's favorite brand of condensed milk. A carefree childhood. But was it a happy one? I hated being a child. I found it degrading when people visited my parents and said, how's school going? I turned my back on them. You can't talk down to children, it's dreadful. I'm good with children. I know what they don't want to hear. You have to take a different interest in things. Nowadays, children play an entirely different role, which is not necessarily a good thing, because it's too much the center of attention. I had to learn French and English when I was young, because that's what my parents would speak when I wasn't supposed to understand them. So I learned them before I went to school. I think that's good. Today, it's normal to be trilingual. It wasn't then. I even learned a bit of Italian, but never really put in the effort. I sketched and read. I've never done anything else. I hate playing. Any games or card games, casinos. I'm playful, but I don't like playing. Before my hair became curly, I had this stupid fringe. This little cloth. Nobody was wearing Austrian clothing in northern Germany, so I thought it was great. I didn't want to look like the other children. 
But I soon gave up on the shorts. I thought they were degrading. He was already different to the other boys. He stood out, not in a bad way, but rather he was something special. Dresses differently to the other boys. Yes, and he always had long hair. Not just a different haircut to the other boys, but he always had thick, long hair. Already a bow tie, a white shirt and a black jacket. My mother always told me my nostrils were too big, that they needed curtains. My hair colour was a bit like mahogany. She'd say I looked like a chest of drawers. My lips were so red that the teacher once wiped my mouth with a tissue, thinking I was wearing lipstick, but I wasn't. My mother wrote a letter saying it was an outrage to do such a thing. The bow was striped a bit like this. Very long for German standards. At school, one would always say, cut your hair, and I'd say, no way. My mother always said, I'll never visit your school, even if you fail, I don't care. It's embarrassing for you, I don't care. One day we were coming from the dentists, they weren't great in the countryside in the early 50s, and he said to my mother, how wonderful to see you, Mrs. Lagerfeld. You never come to see us. Couldn't you tell your son to cut his hair? Not for a hundred years will I forget what she did then. She went up to him and said, why, are you still a Nazi? I thought that was great. 1943. Karl, christened as Karl Otto, is 10 years old. It's wartime. In July, there are major offensives, hundreds of planes dropping bombs on Hamburg. The destruction is immeasurable. The Lagerfeld family are safe, however, kilometers away from the city gates. In the 1930s, Karl's father bought the Bissemore estate in Schleswig-Holstein. The majority of his childhood was spent in the idyllic small town. You know, I spent most of my childhood here in Bad Bramstedt in Schleswig-Holstein. Let's not even mention the lack of class. A village school with alcoholic farm children. They were thrown out of the first grade. Maybe two or three were okay, but the rest... He's not an outsider. He's considered a generous classmate, happily lending out his Karl May books. The others quickly get used to his clothing style and that he likes to wear a bow tie on school outings into the countryside. He sat behind me in the classroom, and I'd turn around and ask what was he doing. Always drawing, no matter what was going on at the front of the classroom. Karl Otto was always drawing. This is how it was in my childhood. There were rails, and this went to the garden, and here was a driveway. And there were these two pedestals with huge flowers. Here was a flower bed, and here a hedgerow. So was das. There was a bay window. I remember sitting there as a child. They called it the Bauer. My room was the one up here with a large balcony. And that was the room of one of my sisters. That was my mother's room. And that was my father's back there. And that was the dining room where her desk stood. And I said to myself, one day you'll be world famous. I was five or six.
In the Kunsthalle of his birthplace, Hamburg, the world-famous Lagerfeld opens an exhibition. It features the muses of Anselm Feuerbach, an important 19th century painter, and the muses of Karl Lagerfeld. Both artists are on the quest for classical beauty. The concept of classical beauty is not inferior to changing fashion, like the notion of beauty of a model and things like that. It remains the basis of everything that one always returns to. The wonderful thing about classical beauty and youth is that it's temporary. It's fleeting. It's not a constant. In recent years, Baptiste Giabiconi has been Lagerfeld's most important muse. A sculpture has even been commissioned. The models Inez de la Fressange, Claudia Schiffer and Linda Evangelista also served as inspirations, but Baptiste has played a special role. For me, muses are subjects, but not life partners. Four or five years ago, he really was an ideal form when he was 18, 19. A modern vision of beauty and antiquity. He's changed now, grown up. You can't compare it. That's when he was the world's number one model. But he gave it all up because he wanted to sing. However, that will turn out. I love cows. I collect pictures with cows. A Glückskli advert when I was a child ran, milk from the happy cow. As a child, I was often called the happy cow, not even the bull. He attentively listens to the director, but his mind is wandering back to the past. The Hamburger Kunsthalle was a school of seeing for the young Lagerfeld. Instead of school, I came here. The best was Manet's Nana, a portrait of Marcel Lender by Toulouse-Lautrec and an early Renoir with a woman on a horse riding in the Bois de Boulogne. I loved anything French. I wanted it and I wanted to go there. That's why I learned French as a child. Otherwise, I couldn't have gone to school there. I always said, I need to get out. Hamburg was okay, but not what I wanted. In 1950, he attended a fashion show in a Hamburg hotel. Amongst the collections is one from Christian Dior from Paris. The new look captivated him. His mind is made up. He's going to Paris and to the world of fashion. He's a mere 17 years old. He will cut his teeth assisting fashion designers Pierre Balmain and Jean Patou. Before doing his final school exams, which he never completed, he travels alone to the city on the Seine. He perfects his French and soaks up 1950s Paris. It was almost rotten, this smell from rotting garbage if he went to the Port Cochere. It was a smell I never found again. It doesn't exist anymore. It was somehow terrible, but that was Paris. People said to my mother, your son will lose himself in Paris. And my mother said, some people are in Paris to lose themselves, others aren't. And he's one of the ones who won't. He knows what he wants. One can't forget that my father had an office in Paris. Hamburg wasn't far away. It wasn't that bad. I had a survival instinct as a child, I tell you. It was concrete, and it wasn't dangerous. As a 17, 18-year-old, you could go along the Champs-Élysées at night. 
Nowadays, that's impossible. But Paris was a nice little village. It was still like before the war. Afterwards, that changed. I wasn't a mother's boy. I thought she was great. But I detest parents who are always on at their children. My father lived in another world. He was 100% canned milk and nothing else interested him. 57% market share was his minimum and the rest didn't interest him. Often people ask me what I discussed with my father, what advice he gave me apart from, I'd like a new car or new clothes. I never spoke to him. He was charming, just not as funny as my mother. She had a perfect nose, thick eyebrows. and snow-white, wavy hair, and always earrings with three diamonds and one pearl. She looks arrogant in photos, but she wasn't like that at all. If you look at pictures, you'd think she was humorless. God knows that wasn't the case. She had wonderful white hair, not like mine, which I need to powder so it looks white. Usually mine looks like, as my mother said, like a cow's tail when it started going white. Even if you like cows, you don't really want to look like a cow's tail. That's what she looked like in my childhood. His mother is proud of her son, who has his first success in Paris. In 1953, Yves Saint Laurent wins third prize for one of his cocktail dresses. Karl Lagerfeld, barely 20, wins first place with his design for a coat. They become friends and lifelong rivals. Great. He was great. Until 78. After that, it was always the past, always Proust and all that. Okay, but this is fashion. Lagerfeld's career is taking off. Already back then, the younger designer had a unique sense of self-expression, which was taking on a French flair. In 1967, he conjures up the total look, one outfit of clothing and accessories. He likes to spend the evenings in Saint-Germain-de-Prés, in cafes, record stores and bookshops. He starts building up his personal library, which today boasts a collection of over 300,000 works. He's friends with Marlena Dietrich, advises her on her stage costumes, and is head designer at Chloe. His collection for the fashion house, a trend setting for the 70s, the era of loud colors and patterns. Even then, Karl's horizon reached far beyond the fashion world. He knows everything about art and design, and his co-workers are sure to let him know about anything new. His interest also lies in creating new materials for the clothing ranges. When you make clothes, you don't make them out of paper. You have to have the material. So I started working more with material, developing material. It's important whether you have stiff fabric or soft fabric. And with colors, you have to know years in advance what's coming, so you have time to try things out, to work on them. In all these three jobs, which he so loves, the first thing is always the choice of material. Choosing a cloth, which medium to use for photography. Is it daguerreotopie? Is it a screen print? Is it a gelatine silver print? 
especially with the books. What color, what paper, he really knows what he's doing. We are on the same level, talking about the formula, about the technical details of how the book will be printed. The catalogue for the next Chanel show is being made. In a spontaneous meeting at a Hamburg exhibition, Lagerfeld examines every detail. His colleagues take every second they can get. Karl doesn't make appointments. His energy knows no bounds. You can work with him at five in the morning, develop ideas, over the day you do corrections, and at 10 p.m. he's still just as fresh. If you have a question, you always get a precise answer. Recently, I hung an abstract the wrong way round on the wall. He called me and said, do you see anything? I said, no, not really. He told me it was the wrong way round. That's the red wine, he said. <coughs> Of course, it all takes its toll. When he has meetings in Europe, he swoops in in a private jet, doesn't linger, and leaves as soon as his work is done, so he's back in Paris for the night. I don't feel the need to see a lot of people. I love being at home with my sketch pad, my books. That's the most exciting thing I can imagine. I've got enough flying time under my belt to be calm about it. His confidants go with him, and then he'll be alone again. No one has access to Karl's Puritan-styled apartment, apart from the staff and his current life partner, his cat, Choupette, who is now also becoming something of a celebrity. That's my nature. I'm a Puritan, absolutely. Maybe it's a self-preservation instinct. I don't know. I'm very straight-laced. I've never drunk alcohol, never smoked, never taken drugs. I've always been an outsider, but that's why I survived better than the others. He observed the others in the 70s and 80s in clubs like the Palace, where night turns to day and a new type of liberal age is ushering in. He meets Jacques de Bacher and falls in love. De Bacher is a young dandy of French high society in whom Yves Saint Laurent also took an interest. He was a figure of French elegance and culture that the French don't espouse anymore. He was impossible, I'll tell you that now. And his notions were hard to defend, but there was something French about him in the good way even with the drawback of his political ideas. Yes, but not in the way that you mean. Then I wouldn't be here anymore. He died of AIDS. It was more of a father-son relationship. He was much younger than I. I admire people who are self-destructive. I've got no talent for it myself. I'm also not a savior. We're all masters of our own destinies. And someone once said, the most important thing is not how to save oneself, but how to lose oneself. But I'm no good at that. 
Aber Sie haben Jacques trotzdem begleitet, als er starb. Ja, das ist doch selbstverständlich. Yes, of course. Das ist doch selbstverständlich. I'm not made of ice. I don't only think about myself. Quite the opposite. The better you are at being with yourself, the better you are at taking care of others. Besser können Sie sich um andere kümmern, hm? In 1977, Jacques de Bachier makes what is probably the first feature-length film about fashion, about a Fendi collection designed by his life partner Karl. He's watching the film again for the first time in 37 years. Memories return of a great but impossible love. Insupportable, oui, parce qu'il sortait la nuit, il ne levait que tard et les gens attendaient. Non, c'était tragique. Il n'est pas fait pour travailler, c'est pas comme nous. The film is being shown alongside an exhibition in the Munich Haus der Kunst that is to be opened that evening, as well as the new Fendi boutique in the Maximilianstrasse. There, the who's who of Munich have been waiting for Karl, as he's known to all these people who have never met him. Jacques' film is more important. The guests are excited, the organizers rattled, the schedule in disarray. Wie lange muss man auf sie warten? Ja, immer lange, aber wissen, weil ich zu viel Always a long time, because I do too much. I should never arrange a rendezvous. 24 hours just isn't enough. I don't mean to be rude, but things need to be done. There are jobs like mine, where you can't just stop and sketch for two hours. It's possible to achieve nothing in two hours, and then it all goes in the bin. I'm my bin's best client. I'm never satisfied, and if I always looked at the clock, I'd become hysterical. I'm easily hysterical, but then it gets really bad. Hmm. Alongside everything else, Karl Lagerfeld is also a filmmaker. Here he is, directing Geraldine Chaplin as Coco Chanel. He wants to show how he saw his great predecessor. For Lagerfeld, humor and a certain disregard are necessary for a legend to endure. When we talk of Chanel Whenever we talk of Chanel, these were the first pictures of the gold chains that Inez de la Fressange wore as a belt, and that for most of the 80s. That was the new Chanel image, so not the dusty old one that one knew before Karl took over, but a very positive new image of a woman. Before that, he was with Chloe, and then Karl Lagerfeld. When I started, people said to me, don't touch it, it's impossible. Now everyone is reinventing the old companies. Then, no one was doing it. The owner said to me, I've got this, I don't like the way it is, it's not flattering, do what you want. If it works, okay. If not, I'll sell it. But it worked so well, he became one of the richest men in the world. Even better, I don't care. I'm not a money person. For me, money's something you throw out of the window and it walks back in the door. And money doesn't bring happiness. After the death of his friend Jacques, Lagerfeld gains weight and throws himself even more into his work. He has a presence in all continents, his own empire managed in three languages. Wherever he is in the world, Karl Lagerfeld is surrounded by the rich and the beautiful. He's in his element when he's managing things in three different languages simultaneously. Whilst on the phone to Fendi in Rome, he's choosing models for the next show. Acknowledging in French, I'm never content or happy. Yes, but I'm never content. 
I don't have one personality, I have three. That's what's so amusing. That's why I can't translate myself. When I write in German, people want me to write in French. But then I write something else, because I express myself differently. It's a different mentality. I've never translated one of my texts. It would bore me to death. And I'd never say it the same way in another language. Nicht übersetzbar. Nee, nein, und nicht ersetzbar. Ha, 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 ha. He also likes to challenge his self-discipline. In 2000, he decides to radically change his diet. With a doctor and his personal chef, he devises a special diet. He wants to lose 40 kilos in 13 months. I was so busy that it didn't interest me. And then I suddenly said, this can't go on. This isn't for clothing, and you love clothes. And the doctor said that I should lose weight. A silly story, but it really worked. Forty kilos. I gained a few again because you get too thin. You look like the Grim Reaper on holiday. Was war denn das erste Kleidungsstück, das Sie danach angezogen haben? A type of reading goat made from black Radzimir by Hedi Sliman from Dior, made especially for me. But today I only buy finished things. I think it's healthy to fit into sizes and not mess around. If it doesn't fit, it's not for me. As a rule, I'm a size 48 by Dior. He whisks along the catwalk, not unlike the ethereal models themselves. The only thing I hate in the world is responsibility. I'm completely irresponsible. I wouldn't have companies where I'm the boss and think people are financially dependent on me. I just come along, say do this, do that, and it works, and that's that. Freedom is distance from responsibility. I'm not even responsible for myself. I never have meetings. I think before I say something. I can't be bothered to listen to people who babble to justify their salary. He prefers to travel, design a hotel in China, personally present Chanel collections in the Middle East, like here in Dubai. The well-groomed audience is eager to see and be seen. For these occasions, Karl always brings his entire entourage. The tailors and stylists with whom he has worked for 30 years. And the perfectionist can't help but add final touches himself backstage. There is no routine. The moment is everything. It's his long time connections to the people he works with. It's a caring friendship from both sides. And I think he had the opportunity and seized it to create this perfect working and living environment. Und Lebenswelt zu schaffen. A photo shoot with Sebastian Jondeux, who he has chosen to be a model. Sebastian is his private secretary. <laughs> and he's been Karl's bodyguard for 15 years. He knows how to handle himself. He learned to box in the Parisian banlieue. Sebastian knows no limits when it comes to protecting Karl.
things are busy in the Folkwang Museum in Essen. Lagerfeld's complete works are being honored with an exhibition. Even at these events, Sebastian does not leave his side. Neither does Caroline Lebar, his press officer for the last 30 years. Most of what can be seen here, he has long forgotten about, says Karl. And it certainly has nothing to do with art. I'm not a serious artist. I'm not an artist at all. I make things I like and that's that, whether other people like them or not. I'm against today's obsession with art. People want to be in the art world, want to be taken seriously. I don't want to be taken seriously. I don't want to give the impression that I'm a serious person. One can be serious, but one doesn't have to see it. Thank you. In the morning, he writes a text. At 10, he sketches fashion for his collections. After that, we work on the photo book. Then he'll be in the studio and work on the concept for a big photo shoot. He does commercial advertising for businesses. He creates things that are made. He designs a car, he designs a helicopter, he designs a grand piano. All at the same time, he doesn't create a limit. Alles mischt sich bei ihm permanent ab und er zieht keine Grenze. Ich denke, dass das was I think what makes Karl special is his childlike curiosity. Diese Neugier. He's managed to preserve it for himself. Ich glaube, die hat er sich bewahrt. Functions like this are not something Karl enjoys. That's only what other people think. This is not a role for Karl. I saw this thing by Fendi. They showed me a microfilm. 70,000 drawings by Karl that I did over 50 years. What one's done is okay, but it's much more fun to be at the start of something, resting on the laurels of what one's done in the past. I could give up now. Sie leben eigentlich fürs Morgen. Für heute. For today. I think that's healthy, otherwise I couldn't do my job. If you loll complacently in your rags, you can't. Auf alten Lumpenregel, dann geht das nicht. Also der Moment ist Ihnen das Wichtigste. Of course. You know, if the now isn't good, you can always imagine the past was better, which is probably an illusion anyway. You may as well kill yourself now. Just living from memories, which make things seem like they were better, which maybe weren't that great. The things I've done with my life, okay, but I've got no desire to relive all of it.